somebody today asked me if I miss like running around in a field or something. I was like, no, I'm running around on the bottom of the ocean. For the last two weeks, I've been living underwater as part of Mission 31. I was a mission scientist. Hi. You're here. I'm here. <laughs> Welcome to your new home. Thank you. Nice to see you. Are you ready for this? Aquarius is an underwater habitat. It is on the sea floor at 63 feet and it houses up to six people at a time so that you can conduct underwater research. It's a one-of-a-kind space underwater. There's, enough, there's no other marine lab underwater in the world. The habitat is small. It's cozy. It's about the size of a school bus, 400 square feet. And as you can see right outside the window, there's the ocean floor about 63 feet down. There's some fish swimming around. Normally when I'm a surface diver, I'm always worried about my bottom time. When you're diving to about 60 feet, you have about 60 minutes of bottom time without risking the bends or decompression sickness. And that's not very much if you're setting up experiments and trying to do science. But as an aquanaut, as a saturated diver, because we are living underwater for so long, we can dive for up to nine hours a day. For our two weeks underwater, we accomplished what we could have done in about two years from the surface. We came with five different science goals. Overall, looking at global climate change and how it might affect a coral reef such as Conch Reef, where Aquarius is, is at. And so we um, took the approach of looking at tiny microclimates, such as inside a barrel sponge or inside the mouth of a tiny coral polyp to address what might happen if we have warming of the oceans or if they're becoming more acidic in the environment that is surrounding these organisms. I think one of the most intense moments I've had underwater was during this first dive with the helmet where we had to flood the mask. We had to flood the helmet by laying down and breaking the seal at our neck and letting water in and then we had to stand up and clear it out. And it was an instantaneous thing, it took less than 15 seconds, but I was still pretty nervous about that. After all of the diving I've done, that is one of the most scary moments. Sylvia is a goliath grouper. She hangs out around Aquarius habitat. They are able to use their, their anatomy to create this sound wave that travels through the water, which is their way of stunning prey or communicating with each other. There was a moment where I crept towards her and was actually able to just hang out with Sylvia for about 20 minutes. And then right before she left, she boomed right at me and it went right, right through my chest. It's like being in a big rock concert or something. And then she just kind of went away. Like, all right, enough's enough. You had 20 minutes with me. <laughs> it looks like an aquarium from your viewpoint, but you are the aquarium. It is the ocean and fish are looking in at you. And at night especially, it starts out as um, tiny plankton swarming to the light around the habitat, followed by larger types of planktonic animals eating those, and then small fish, and then bigger fish. It was like the food chain unraveling in front of the viewport every night. It was awesome. <laughs> All right, we have permission. Secure your exhaust valves. All right, commence blow down. Here we go. It was very regimented and, okay, put your fins on, get your mask on, get in the water. All right, fasten four zero feet, 40 feet. I didn't get to reflect on it until we were hanging on to the line and they were telling us to come up to the surface one at a time and we're all hanging on the line and I'm realizing we spent two weeks underwater and this is it. I got kind of teary-eyed at that moment while hanging on to a line at 15 feet. I didn't want it to end because it was so cool and it was probably one of the most unique things I'm ever going to do.